Welcome to Talking with Tamika. Today's conversation is super important and near and dear to my heart because one, I have my beautiful sister here with me on today. Aww. And two is before I even started this series, this was the first conversation that I had in my head. Mm -hmm. This is what created it all. I said, oh, I wanted to talk more about this um, journey with dementia, caring for our mother. Yeah. So this is such like this is such an impactful conversation to have, I think, for so many people that's in my community. Um, and we just want to share some tips, some stories and just ways that we've learned to advocate for our mom, ways to, you know, have great self-care, um, building a community, finding support, so many other things. So join us with this conversation that we're about to get into right now. Woohoo! Well, thank you so much for coming, like for real, for real. Yes, yes. So I know where I'd rather be. And I think it's so important to have this conversation. So first, thank you mm -hmm. for having this conversation. Thank you for being such an amazing caretaker for this mom, for our mom, yeah. and and for sharing this journey, right? Because it's important. Um, and I know I couldn't do it without the the help of you. So just having you to share this with is is really important. So thank yeah, you. absolutely. Thank you, Cees. Um, we always are talking and I'm like, I always say, I don't think I could do this without you. Like, it's just so many things. And we also felt like nothing was all in one place. It felt like everything <laughs> was just spread out. You had to kind of figure it out on your own through trial and error and yeah. conversations with people, having yeah. different, you know, yeah. lots I, of research. Lots of research. And so that's what's so important about this journey of dementia, right? Because it's so emotional. You're seeing your loved one go through these physical and cognitive and behavioral changes. Yeah. But at the same time, you need to find out how you get support or how to make doctor's appointments, which doctor they need to see now, depending yes. on how um, these disease may be affecting them. Mm -hmm. But there's no place, to your point, that says, start here yep. and then click here. Yeah. And this is what you need next. It, like, no one puts it all together. So mm -hmm. it's almost like a... Um, a, a journey, a detective journey, if you will, of just researching, finding out, talking to others um, to really understand how am I best going to help my loved one? Because, you know, I want to see them get the best care through this. A hundred percent. It was, yeah, it was definitely a challenge. And for me, I had to rely a lot on prayer because I was mm. like, God got to take this over because I am so confused. Yeah. I don't know what to do next. Yeah. I don't know what is the best thing for her. According to the Alzheimer's Association, 6.7 million people in the U.S. suffer from Alzheimer's. That is about three city of Chicago's, to give you some clarification. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. So and so also Alzheimer's isn't quite dementia. Like it's. Thank you for saying. Yes. That. Mm -hmm. And dementia isn't Alzheimer's. It's like one Dementia is a part of the Alzheimer's disease. That's right. Dementia is like a catch-all bucket, if you will, mm -hmm. right? And and so there's different kinds of dementia, which you know yeah. uh, affect your cognition and and your your behaviors. And so Alzheimer's is one form of dementia, but mm -hmm. you know there are there are several different yeah. types. And that's why certain people may still be able to drive and have dementia. What were some of the early signs that you saw with mommy? Yeah. Yeah, I think there early signs and and these might be more broad that other people can can understand as well, but like there there's early signs of maybe just, you know, forgetfulness of mm -hmm. writing things down. So I think I shared a story before about how um, mom would collect almost like receipts or small papers that had the date on them. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking she's just collecting or maybe like a, you know, I don't know if it's hoarding or, or something hoarding. like that, right? Mm -hmm. um, but in actuality, she was keeping those to remember what the date was right. each day. And I didn't know that until after the fact. Right. But, you know, you see your, your loved ones start to make small changes and these changes over time start to add up. And mm -hmm. I didn't realize she, she was losing the ability to keep up with what day it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
for me, it was definitely like during different phone conversations mm -hmm. and just trying to communicate with her. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people may chalk this up to, oh, it's old age or something like yeah. that. But our mom, yeah. she's not really old. Like I a lot of people old. are like, she's pretty young. She's spunky, <laughs> you know. So she's 79 right now. But we started seeing these signs when she was around 70-ish, like 70. 71, 72. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it was like her not being able to like use the telephone yeah. her asking me to write down can you write down everybody's information and like Phone post number. it there yeah. i started to see because when we did move her out of one place mm -hmm. and then move her into another place i had to go through all her things i started to see she wrote um tamika's husband's name is anthony like she started Ooh, writing like certain things to, to connect herself. things mm -hmm. i know i i was just like wow but this was when she was still able to write. Yeah, yeah. At this point, she's not writing anymore. Yeah, yeah. She's not reading anymore. And I will get so excited where sometimes yeah. I'll see her and she'll read something on like a sign or something. I'll be like, yay, mommy, like that type of thing. Yeah. So, But I think what's important here is we didn't know we were even on this journey early on. So we didn't have a diagnosis that says your mother is on early onset dementia or Alzheimer's or, you know, we didn't we didn't get to a neurologist. And and I think that that has a lot to do with our community too, not having access or even trust in in mm, doctors and the medical profession, big. right? And, yeah. and not being there. And so, you know, knowing that our mom um, relies so much on, you know, just public and, and uh, government health care benefits, mm -hmm. right? Um, so it's not a, a private doctor that says, come on, we're going to run a full battery of tests right. and, and really help you figure out what this is. It's us figuring out, okay, well, what can we get? Yeah. And how can you help us figure out what this is? And, and you know, and, and by the time we did that, Cease, if you recall, we were well on this journey. So all of these things we're saying that you're sharing about the phone number, we didn't even know we were on a journey at all. We had at no that idea. Point. Yeah, we, <laughs> we knew mom was getting older and we knew that she needed more help. And when, so I've been candid about this and you know, you was there, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you understand that we experienced homelessness a lot growing up. Um, and just uh, once, you know, mom and pa separated that type of thing happened more and more frequently so when we all were grown and we mm -hmm. all went our own way got our own places yeah, started our yeah. own lives mm -hmm. that type of thing of evictions and things like that kept happening so we didn't chalk it up to oh she can't take care of her finances so much anymore we just kind of chalked it up to this is what has been happening this has been for happening. years yeah so ultimately yeah. mm -hmm. when mommy ended up that we were like so shocked she ended up choosing to live on the street mm -hmm. and that's when we could not that was for me that was when it was the toughest for me like i just i was i felt like my hands were tied well but I, but i think that that was that was also uh, you know after that that came we were ultimately able to get help at that point because that's when it was fully vivid that she didn't have the capacity to make good judgment mm -hmm. anymore. And, and it's so unfortunate, but at the same time, I think a message that we kept hearing from, you know, whether it was the, the judge or the medical profession is, she is so lucky to have you. Oh, right? wow. Yeah, I she, do remember that. Right. Yeah. She is so lucky to have you because we were strong advocates for mm -hmm. her. So advocating and just coming and speaking on mom's behalf and saying this is what she needs. And, yeah. you know, how can we get this and mm -hmm. asking the questions that she's not able to ask, mm -hmm. um, I think is is so, you know, it, it was a critical turning point from, yeah. from that. It was like we had to go through those stressful scary time. situations yeah. where it's like oh my gosh to where we had to get in front of people that could help us okay you can you know 
now you can help your mom. Yeah. Like we had to just go through certain things. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I also think that that was unique to our journey absolutely. because we were going through, like you said, like the, the mental health mm -hmm. as well as dementia, you know, navigating both of those. But for folks out there who may not be, you know, on that same ex exact yeah. journey, there is still a need to say, okay, when and how do I step in and advocate? for my loved one right. because I think it's a the big part of this process is the the person that's actually going through dementia even being aware that they have dementia and they're like mm -hmm. no I can still drive absolutely I can still yeah. go to the store but I mean we live in Phoenix Arizona and we mm -hmm. see silver alerts all the time where wow. like a an older person maybe wandered. have gotten yeah in a vehicle or wandered and not sure how to how to return wow that's so 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 scary when mommy actually was diagnosed mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that was a that was a tough pill to swallow that, i was like what yeah it was a tough pillow pillow <laughs> You're right. it was not as big as a pillow <laughs> it hit us like a pillow like um, yeah. but but it was it was tough because as as we mentioned we're navigating both mental health and um you know signs of of dementia as as well we didn't necessarily know how far along she was. And so when we got the diagnosis from uh, the doctor, they had told us that she was in advanced stages of dementia at that point. And, you know, that was difficult. Advanced, it's almost like we missed the bus or I something know, like I was that. Like, <laughs> I like, remember when you called me and mm -hmm. I was like, advanced dementia? Like, I just was, I, I was just like, how did it get to advanced? Where's this, where's this spectrum of early onset regular dementia, advanced dementia, yeah, all of that. Yeah. And what does this mean for mom? And what does this mean for us? Yeah. So and and what the doctor had said, I recalled is um, there are activities of daily living, ADLs, right? You re recall those. Mm -hmm. How many of those acti activities um, is mom able to navigate mm -hmm. and do by herself? Yeah. And once we started going through that list, list cease, yeah. It was like, oh, well, we help with this. We yeah. help with this. We need to help with this. And yeah. we realized, oh, while we're still, you know, there and for our mom, we are helping her more and more just through, mm -hmm. you know, the normal things of getting dressed and mm -hmm. showering and, and bathing and ensuring that she has her meals on time. And, yeah. you know, they asked, you know, does she prepare her own meals? We were like, mm, not no. anymore. Right. Yeah. Um, the whole thing about mom choosing to be homeless that was that was a sign that of was dementia a huge sign because although we have seen you know our experiences with homelessness um that's what that's when it got so hard to pinpoint that something was necessarily wrong versus mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this is this is you know something that has been happening in the past plus aging type of thing right you know right. or plus just being alone right. versus like not having a household of kids Absolutely. you know Yes. that type of thing so ultimately when our mother chose to be like she chose to be on the streets the police told me as many times as i fought tooth and nail they told me what she's doing is not illegal she is no she is not hom homicidal and she is not suicidal so there's nothing we can do about that mm -hmm. and i remember many times driving to where she was mm -hmm. um and trying to get her to come with me one time i was even so bold <laughs> as to where i was like mom you gotta come with me so, girl, I, I snatched her up she i had i had got her in my car because i was like mom we're gonna go somewhere da, da, and picked her up and she got in the car and then I was, I don't know why I said this, but I was like, mom, you come home with me. And she was like, girl, that. and then she tried, girl, she opened up the car door. Oh, no, it was, was moving. The, she was going to tuck and roll. The car was moving yeah. and her foot almost hit the ground. And then I was like, oh my God, let me stop before she gets hurt. Y'all, our mama was a bad mama jamma. In real life. In real life. Do you remember the time when she tried to steal my car? <laughs> Girl, <laughs> but see, again, this is all I ran in to try to get some medication for her. And we I don't think we had gotten the dementia diagnosis by that time. I don't think so. But my butt put my car in park and I was like, I'm just going to run right in there, you know, grab this. And left her in the, dr uh, the I left in a passenger seat. seat, girl. She I, I maybe was in there 40 seconds, Tosh. That's enough time. Girl, <laughs> she got out the car, went to the driver's side, sat down, and I just saw her little head. <laughs> and she was driving. 
I did a full sprint towards that car because I'm like, if she gets on the street, oh, I don't over. know what's gonna happen. Right, it's over. And she was the girl. She was basically like, "Girl, what you? Why are you tripping?" Basically, I was like, "Lord, I got places to go." Girl, no, I was scared for yeah. you know no, I mean, what was that, gonna happen. I mean that 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 makes absolute sense. So, like to to spend a little bit of time then talking about advocating. So you know. She's homeless, and mm -hmm. then being homeless, she actually got an infection yeah, in her foot. Yeah, the gangrene. Foot. Right. And so she had to go to the hospital. I think it was the shelter that actually said, we can't check you in tonight. You're going to have to go to the yeah. hospital and get that checked out, right? He called me and said, you know, your the mom, director. something, yeah. He was like, you're, something's going on with your mom. She's got like an infection or something. We um, we actually got her to go to the hospital because she was afraid to go to the hospital. Mm. Like she rarely ever took medication. Mm. Rarely ever, she rejected all things like yeah. I don't have this. No, 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 no type of thing. So when she got, when I got the call, thankfully I was like somewhat kind of close in her area during that time. So I went straight to the hospital. Right, and that was what was that was the the turning point it was the turning point because before that like you said the the police said you know she's not suicidal she's not homicidal and a, a judge would always say hey in order to do any sort of guardianship or anything like that you know she's actually got to go in voluntarily which she was not doing we were like she's not she gonna do was that. not doing or you know that you know Something's Something got to happen that, right. to Something, where we can say. Yes. And, and, you know, unfortunately that this happened, but fortunately that this was the something that happened to get her in to, to see medical professionals to yeah. be able to say, okay, so we're going to mm -hmm. need to make some changes. It's obvious she doesn't have the judgment capacity. Absolutely. Because they were asking her questions too, like, what day is it? Who's the president? Yeah. All that kind of stuff. Yeah. And she was just trying to like change the subject basically. Um, and then she I felt bad. Life. Yeah. <laughs> what day is it? <laughs> she like, uh, look over there. <laughs> but no, seriously, I was like, I didn't know that. I didn't know that mom was in that. We didn't know. State to where she did. Cause I'm telling you, she was still lively, talkative, could hold a conversation, all that kind of stuff. But I didn't realize at that point, that's where we were. That's where we were, right. Yeah. Right, right. So that's when we started having all these sub conversations amongst this conversation of getting her well from the gangrene. Like, yeah. so ultimately that ended up working out. She was healed, thankfully. Yeah. Um, and that's when we started to go to court. Mm -hmm. We were able to draft paperwork. Yep. And mom went to court to try to fight for her so she's like <laughs> for her i don't need y'all help she's like i got this i'm like mommy please the let judge, us help she had trust issues with you know yeah but the judge asked the one question she said okay you know miss sadie if if we you know don't go through with this today mm -hmm. and and you go back out she said are you going to go back out and you know live you know basically on the street mom said yes i am <laughs> So, girl, and I was there and I'm like, mama said, what? Girl. Yeah. But I mean, I laugh today, but it's only because like the lack of judgment was there to say that, you know, for her to think anything was wow. wrong with that. That's where she thought her friends were and things yeah. like that. So um, that, that was the beginning of our, you know, really advocacy journey and mm -hmm. our um, direct caregiving journey yeah. because from then on we were we were co-guardians so we yep. signed the paperwork as co-guardians we was like you want to do it full-time <laughs> do i want to do it by myself yeah. let's share because this is a lot it's a lot so um yeah and i know so many people don't have somebody like there's yeah. so many people that when i do post about mommy and you know they're just like it was me by myself and yeah. sometimes caring for more than one person so yeah. i just want to yeah. like just give like the flowers to those types of people that are Absolutely. that are able and willing to physically do that. And I also want to let people know, like, I don't want you to feel guilty yeah. if you are like, I don't have the capacity for this so because important. everybody does not have the capacity for this, no. depending no. on what's going on in your life. 
Yeah. Well, you know, like, what are your responsibilities? Yeah. What's on your plate? Yeah. I, I had a young son at the, at the time. You had, you know, kids yeah. at, at home in high school and, and, you know, just balancing the family is, yeah. is you know, and you're an entrepreneur and balancing that and, and, you know, me with my corporate job and then our husbands. I was just about to say, <laughs> husbands. Our husbands. Yeah. You want to talk a little bit about the husbands? Absolutely. So one, I got to give flowers to my husband because like, like through this entire journey, he's been supportive. Um, but when mommy and ultimately started staying with us, yeah, you know, so this is something that Natasha and I did. M Natasha would take mommy for six months in Arizona, and then I would have mommy for six months here in Chicago. So there's still things I was trying to accomplish. I was still trying to yeah. um, grow my boutique business, standout yeah. style. I was still trying to um, yeah. grow plant-based Tamika and just share what I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. And Anthony was just like, go ahead, I got your mom, I got your mom, mm -hmm. go ahead and do that. And like, I wanna, he told me, I want to be as supportive of you. He's like, mm -hmm. I want to be um, like basically like a co, mm -hmm. like a co-caregiver basically. Yeah. Like I just want to oh, be there to I support you. I love that And so girl, much. oh my gosh, I remember coming back from a food video. Mm -hmm. It was in the evening hours and I came back home mm -hmm. and him and mom are dancing. <laughs> girl, they're dancing, having a good time. And mom is like, hey girl, I got your man. <laughs> hey girl, hey. <laughs> And I'm telling you, I just, I, I, I don't think I'm bald, but I definitely like got teary eyed because it was so That's beautiful sweet. to see That's so sweet. because so many people have spouses, significant others that they do not feel supported by. It definitely changes everything. It changes a in, lot. In the household. It, it changes the entire dynamics. And dynamics it of does. The, of the home. I'm, I'm no longer able to do everything for, for my husband and my, my child first because mom needs constant care. And so make sure she has her medication, make sure, you know, everything's taken care of, make yeah. sure. So I mean the 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 family the network the husband uh, is is so important in in all of that and I yeah. know like my husband when she would stay with us mm -hmm. in in Arizona was so good about you know hey Miss Sadie anytime mm -hmm. anytime, mm -hmm. anytime mom was sitting there or if he was in the same space as she was he mm -hmm. would immediately turn on some Aretha Franklin yes you see yes <laughs> I guess like I got to make sure she's good yeah and then mom would be just be so so comfortable because music is so important in the overall, you know, just making that space more more comfortable for Absolutely. Mom. It's, mm -hmm. it's familiarity there. Yes, yes. Um, so even if she may not remember all the words, you're immediately transported back. Yeah. This and my jam. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's just so funny how music is. Yeah, it like, yeah. it truly, it seems like it just like permeates the soul. Like, yeah. Exactly. But yeah, that it's really something else. So kudos to the husbands and the spouses and you know, anybody the community. Yes. The, the community overall the that is supportive that of you this. Have. Right. Yeah. Right. And if you don't have community or you feel like you don't have community, then then you know, that's when you please reach out and connect, right? With, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um well for me. I still felt like felt like I need a community because we was both so new at this. Yeah, like yeah. we didn't know much of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so what we did was, so um, you start looking for people that are like farther ahead than you are on, on journey. this journey. Absolutely on social. Right, so I right. definitely connected with like. Right. Um, different people on Instagram, different people on YouTube. Yeah. I did research a book on Amazon. I will link it. Um, it's like the Caregiver's Guide to Dementia. It was yes. so helpful. I was mm. like highlighting stuff, taking pictures of it, sending it to our mm -hmm. siblings and everything mm -hmm. like that. Like, this is mom. Like, the, mm -hmm. And it felt so good to get some understanding yeah. to it. Yes. Yeah. Because everybody is so different with this. Yeah. But name, name it to tame it, right? And just uh, yeah, yeah, yeah un getting that understanding and, and putting words to the experiences that we were having. For sure. Yeah. So how did you find self-care? Like, how did you do? I know it was a struggle for you, though, Cease, because I had a stronger support system than you did. Mm -hmm. I would call my friends on really tough occasions mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. I'm like, I really need to do this, mm -hmm. but I really shouldn't bring my mom here mm -hmm. because there's certain things 
It was just overwhelming it, for it's mom. Very, it can be yeah. overwhelming for some, if it's Absolutely. too loud, too, too many people. Too sensory, right. It's sensory too overload. Un, right, mm-hmm. too unfamiliar. It's, yeah. yeah. Loud noises, bright lights, yep. any of that. Yeah, so um, I was able to call on a few of my friends. Oh. Shout out to them. Shout oh. out to, obviously, the husband. That's yeah. everything. But how did you find time for self-care? Oh, let me not forget to say, my sister is pursuing her doctorate degree right now, and she was doing that while she's being a caregiver, while she's working full time, while she's momming, while she's wifing. <laughs> you like why I'm not finished. How are, how are you even sitting which here? Is, right which is why I'm not finished. But um, it's yeah, it's, it's 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 been it's been a process, right? It's mm-hmm. it's been a journey, and um, the self care is you know what I started to realize is. It's just small bits of time, right? Mm -hmm. If I can get a couple of hours here or a couple of hours there and be intentional about, I'm going to take a bath tonight Mm -hmm. or uh, or something and not feeling bad or saying no. Like people telling me that no is a complete sentence and getting comfortable with that, right? No period. Right? (laughs) I cannot do anything else right now, right? Yeah. So, you know, knowing no, your I'm, limits. Exactly. Knowing the limits was was really important. And I think it's there the self-care also comes with a lot of reflection and internal dialogue. Just getting mm-hmm. right with everything because I tell you for me that self-care was difficult because I had internal conflict. Like it was it was like guilt on one side and resentment on the other. Oh, I remember you know, us talking like I, about yeah, that. I was yeah, just, I was struggling with that so much, Cease, because yeah. I was like, Ugh, I'm not able to finish school. I'm not able to take on more at work. And I would love to do that to continue mm-hmm. to, you know, a, ascend my career. But I'm not able to do that right now. Er, but I need to be there to take care of my mom. So it's like this back and forth between guilt and resentment and Mm. working through those and then feeling the emotion of like, I remember, I remember the process of like, mom, mm, no, mm, okay, okay. I'm okay. Okay. (laughs) But I I remember the process of mom, like forgetting my name. Mm. Girl, I know that's hard. That's hard for real. Yeah. And you're the one sitting there caring for her. And then you walk in the room and you can kind of tell like she's just like, hey, lady kind of thing. Like, you know, she. Yeah. And and I had to get OK with that. And yeah. then what I realized, see, so thank you for asking the question of self-care. I realized I couldn't do it all. I was trying to do it all. And so I took time off of work. Oh, I remember I when so you did the grateful. leave. That my my employer allowed me time to take a family leave of absence. I had to take a family medical leave of absence to care for, you know, mom, but I could not do it. It was weighing on me yeah. incredibly. And and I think I needed space to process the emotion mm. of this transition that my mom is forgetting who I am, her yeah. oldest child. Man, that's hardcore. Yeah. yeah. For sure. And that's when you start to realize, too, when the dolls and the teddy bears started Mm -hmm. to get in there. And then it's like, wow, my mom is turning into a little kid again Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. I do remember like she would say to Mika or, you know, my middle name every now and again. Yeah. But ultimately it became, hi, mom. Mm -hmm. Hi, mom. Hi, mom. Hi, mom. That's my mom. I remember when she said that to somebody and I was just like, wow, like that that really it really broke me down, but it's just the sweetest thing in the same instance because it's like, I'll tell you this, I was able to see mom for a different person mm. than the like very tumultuous way yeah. that we grew up. Yeah. Because it was like me against this mental illness. Yeah. It wasn't me against mom, but no. it was just so much. Yeah. yeah. It was too much for a young person to deal with. It was a lot. Because things were said that ne- that never 
like never left me never in my healed, head. Never fully. A absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it's like, now I'm starting to see how she was with our grandma that we never got to meet. Mm, yeah, yeah. We're so I'm like, wow, mommy yeah. was a little spoiled little girl. She was spoiled. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like, but she's absolutely adorable. She's so loving and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But it's like certain things happen to you in your life mm -hmm. and it will like harden you. It will make you cower. It will make you distrust. Yeah. And all that type of stuff happened to her Yeah. to where it, shifted who she was a little bit mm. and it turns you into mm. somebody who is just you know I, i'm scared to show show me because i've shown yeah. me before yeah and then it like it you know yeah it's backfired on me right so that's where the paranoia comes from that's where all the all yeah. the other things come well from. and they can get very combative too right that's a yeah. normal part of the process is this this argumentative it's almost like their personality changes right and you read that in a lot of the research yeah. if you notice uh, like personality changes like they may start swearing and they've never sworn or you yeah you feel like how did her Right. That ain't mama. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And it's because it's this is happening, but they're not aware of what it is. And mm -hmm. it's like they're fighting against what is happening. They're mm -hmm. not fighting you, yeah. but they're fighting against what's happening. And it's almost like they're being swept away and they're like, I don't want to go. I'm trying to hold on. Man, that's so sad to me. Yeah. Remember when mommy told you, like, I can't tell something's going Ooh, on, she, but I know some. She's like, yeah, she can was, you articulate? Because I wasn't there. No, I wasn't there when she I said remember that. it was in her room in our house, and she was like, Tosh, she's like, I don't know what's happening. She's like, something. She's like, I don't know what it is, but I, I don't know what's happening, and that's, that's how she could articulate it. And I knew what she was saying at that point, and it was just. It was That's hard. That's really sad. Yeah, that was it was sad. But I'll tell you, um, I remember, and I'm so grateful. So there's five of us kids and all. There was one day when all five of us got to be on a on a phone call with the mom. Yeah. Yeah. But and I was like, y'all, today's a really good day. And she's, you know, naming all of us and talking to all of us. And I was like, it's a really good day. And then before that cease, us being able to take that trip down to mom's hometown. Yeah. And to have her see all of her brothers and sisters and yeah. have us see all of our cousins. I think that was just a gift from God that it we was. Were, because she she had her awareness at that time. She did. Like, yep. yeah. When she got to see Lily again, her favorite niece, niece and all right. that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That was beautiful. And it was just I, I just be feeling mm -hmm. like. Thank you. Mm -hmm. God will just allow these certain instances that need to happen they need to happen yeah when she saw her brother yes. before he passed away yes. they had this reconnection this moment reconnection. that was so yes. beautiful yes everybody said like they speak this language that nobody yeah. else understood yeah they, there wasn't many words said right. it was just like a love that they have yeah yeah and then so that was necessary because then as we're all getting older mm -hmm. our our you know our uncles and aunts are getting older and then they started to pass yeah yeah so as that's happening we have this hindsight moment like i'm so glad I'm we made it there before this funeral before and during a happy time we just made it a happy time we made it an intentional time and and i would say that that's the key nugget that we can share with you know your whoever is watching is you know do things in the moment. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't become about the memories anymore. Although you take you take the memories with you, but for them, for the person that's going through dementia, it's about being in the moment with them in that moment. And we just had it such a beautiful moment. We did. Mm -hmm. I always say, I'm gonna make the memories for me. I'm gonna make the great experiences for mm -hmm. her. Yeah. So, like when I, you know, like when we're driving in the car and I look mm -hmm. back at her and she's just like, <laughs> like, she's just like vibing, honey. World, yeah. And it's like, I can also see how she transforms or not transforms, but like transcends into another time mm -hmm. when she's listening to this music. Mm -hmm. I'm like, she's doing dance moves on the dance floor right now. <laughs> she really, really is. In her mind. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I love it. I, I think the biggest part of it is there's almost two parallel paths, if not more, of um, 
emotion and things that you've got to come right, get okay with, right? Mm. You've got to be okay and deal with the emotion of the loved one that is going through the dementia. And then you've got to go through your own emotion of whatever, you know, pain, guilt, resentment, anger, because mourning, mourning, mourning who your parent, who, they who were, your loved one once was, who they were, but, but recognizing they're still here. Absolutely. And they still have value. Absolutely. And they, and they are still, you know, worthy to be loved and, and cared for. And, and they're not the same, but they are here yep. and, and we love them. Mommy is still our mommy. Absolutely. <laughs> and she still is, she's giving me lessons. She's teaching me lessons, mm. even if it may not be, this is exactly how you do this here, here, here. <laughs> but it's like, oh, she's teaching me to be patient. She's teaching me um, to really listen, mm -hmm. not for necessarily words, but just like listen for like, energy like she speaks to me through the, like certain she energy. knows energy she, can she really feel does energy. i'm telling you mm -hmm. and that is again it's talked about a lot in that book mm -hmm. the caregiver's journey that i'm going to link to the bottom yeah but i really learned so much about that mm -hmm. and it's it's also like okay there's a certain type of memory that people with dementia will still have if they continue to see somebody over and over and mm -hmm. over again so that's why somebody may um with dementia may see you and then they light up. Yeah. They may not know exactly who you are because I remember the last time mom said to Mika, uh -huh. oh my God, <laughs> I felt like I had won the lottery on that day. I was like, she knows. But yes. even today, when what we were with mommy, today? What she did said, she we were walking up to the say? house and she said, I, I love, love my children. <laughs> I was like, yay, mommy's mommy today. She loves us. I love that. And it also, it took a minute. Like it, you've been here. This is your third day here. Mm -hmm. This is the third time, the third time, the third time you've been around her today and yeah. it clicked for her in that moment. Yeah. And that's okay because that's the way that this, that this thing does. It's yeah. like, you won't get the same person every day at every time, no. but you also no. got to listen to your loved one. When they say they done with something, they, they done. done with something. They done. Like, yeah. don't try to push them. Don't, don't try to force, force them. You can't force. No. Yeah. yeah. So I would like to take this time to like share just like maybe some little helpful tidbits and things like that. Some helpful okay. tips okay. that really helped us because who this journey has been something else like in terms of the learning curve of yeah. it all. Yeah. So let's say this. How about when she was with me? Mm -hmm. She ran me, honey. <laughs> She ran me. Sundowning ran me. Ooh. I remember what is I sundowning got sundowning. So thank you for that. <laughs> so sundowning is when like somebody will be up at all types of the night thinking that it is maybe a normal time of the day. It would be two in the morning and my mm -hmm. mom is going all through the closet, mm -hmm. hanging up clothes, shuffling, shuffling clothes, yeah. just being busy. Uh -huh. um, and I could like just hear her like talking and having conversations yeah. and things yeah. like that. Yeah. And it was just, it was a lot, but it also reminded me of my childhood with certain instances. So I, like, I would just try to go in there and I would just try to calm her down mm. and things like that. Mm. And then eventually certain times I just blew up and I just lost my mind. <laughs> cool. I was like, you need to go to bed. <laughs> Cause I swear to Bob. Turn off all these lights, man. <laughs> third, fourth day of sundowning in a row. Mm. And I it's still have, lot. I was like, oh my you're God, not getting any I'm, rest a, I'm about to lose my, yeah, lose my cool. But, yeah. and then after my six months, my time was done that time. Yeah. Ta, ta, she came to you. You got her on a schedule. I Praise the that, Lord for you. I wrote that you. schedule down. I'm like, look, we up at six. We going to have breakfast at 730. You go, you know, wash the dishes at 1030. And I'm not making her wash the dishes. She liked to wash she the did. dishes. She does. Because she wanted to do something to contribute. So hand yeah. washing the dishes was something she enjoyed yep. doing. I'm like, that's a daily activity, you know? Absolutely. So, yeah. Wow. But that was a game changer. A Having schedule. a schedule. I was just like, mom's not going to wake up at that time. But guess what? She did. And she started to. Mm -hmm. And getting her in the shower was a big fight before. But, but once she got on the, the same schedule, time, yep. it just, it's like, that's that memory that I was talking about. Like, mm -hmm. and I can't remember the term of it, mm -hmm. but it's like, mm -hmm. This is recognizable to me. I remember this. Mm -hmm. Like you just get used to it. Yeah. So yeah. I thank you so much for doing mm -hmm. that schedule because I tell you, and I, girl, I had to tell you thank you multiple mm -hmm. times because it made the caregiving 
experience so much easier yeah. to be like, okay, well, that's what this is. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So another helpful tip too is like, maybe if your loved one is in another room and mm -hmm. you want to find out if they're sundowning, sleeping good, getting up, because mm -hmm. that was freaking me out yep. to think I would wake up the next morning and see and like a whole situation. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, she was up a big chunk of the night and I had no idea. Like you could just tell by what was yeah. left out in the bathroom or what it was yeah, in her. Yeah. So I ended up buying like a chime to go under her, oh, like yeah. a motion sensor to yeah. go under her bed. Yeah. So as soon as her foot set out that bed, mm -hmm. I would get like a, like a, a chime. It would be like, yeah, like mm -hmm. a ding dong. Eventually that pissed me off. <laughs> but it's like, I was like, she really up again. <laughs> But girl, yeah. I'm just like, ultimately I realize it's like, no, I'm not mad at mom, this disease, I really do hate this thing. Yeah. Like that, like that's what it yeah. ultimately is about. Cause yeah, it's, yeah. But you know what? It's also like raising kids. It's like, oh my gosh, how long is this baby going to be teething? Yeah. And then they get through it. So there are phases that you go through yeah. and then they get through it. So yeah. she definitely um, did get through it. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think that that's uh that's something as well but you know just continuing to to be there um i think and um i wanted to go back to you know just advocating with the the medical team or mm -hmm. whomever it is like okay sunday how do i get through this phase let's talk specifically about where we are mm -hmm. and where we, we might go next because i think mm -hmm. that's the other part of the journey is like you know, how do you know what to navigate and, you know, what should this care plan look like? That part, care plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like people don't really talk about that a lot enough unless you're spending thousands and thousands of dollars with somebody usually, then they have care plans. But it's like there again, there goes the advocating That's part. It. And it's really advocating is really asking the questions and like follow up questions too, because a lot of times these agencies or these um doctors or whatever they will tell you like this is how it is or this is that yeah, yeah, okay well yeah. what about this it's like you really have to be a critical thinker absolutely because but like when you, you don't the answer mm -hmm. as soon as you ask the question that part that's what i'm saying <laughs> that's why you have to be like, a critical thinker right. like you weren't gonna tell you me you weren't gonna tell me that you right. weren't gonna say Until you ask that this specific is covered question Oh, and it would piss they me off they will not tell you that that's available yeah and that's what i'm saying so mm -hmm. it's like like exhaust every thing yeah, that you yeah, can think of yeah. in your mind. And, and it's different state by state, right? Yeah. Because I had a different experience in Arizona than, than you yeah, did. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I, you know, there's so much to talk about, I think, but I think, you know, I, I really appreciate just being able to, to have this conversation. And you know what season was so funny is, I didn't know how I was gonna take this. I'm like, you know, I don't like talking in front of I me. know, I was like, Tasha's <laughs> gonna do the interview with me, really, when you said anything for you, Cease, when I text you about it. I was like, I just started crying immediately. Aww. Cause it's like, I knew what I saw this this conversation to be like and i was yeah. like it needs to be had yeah not yeah. just for you yeah. but for me mm -hmm. and for you as well yeah. because to me Thank this you. is therapeutic and it's helping somebody who may be in it yeah. or about to go in it yeah. or trying to figure out whatever it may be yeah, yeah. so yeah and i acknowledge too that we didn't cover everything we about the did. we want to keep this that going. wasn't the purpose it's to create this space to have continued conversations right? absolutely and ongoing so absolutely. I, I think and we could do it virtually next time you, look, know. you know i'll get flued out look, i'll look, go to arizona look, <laughs> your fan base might be like you know what well, we had enough of her uh -uh, no, <laughs> not. no they're gonna be like we love tosh <laughs> so, no for real but yeah, yeah so i just want to thank you so much for tuning in um, absolutely. If you have any questions, anything that you think that we didn't touch on that you would like for us to touch, touch on in the next conversation, please leave it at the bottom, drop a comment, um, check out the description because I'll be leaving some resources and thank you, Cease. Thank you, so Cease. Thank you much. for just being an awesome sister and a beautiful caretaker mm. and a beautiful spirit. Thank you. That's you, Cece. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Isn't she wonderful? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Talking with Tamika. Until next time, like, subscribe, follow, share with your mom, your auntie, your cousin, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye.